first thing I want to go over is a couple of things I didn't give you handouts on, and you are responsible for one of the tests. Whenever you, as a student, need to find a date for Tri-County Tech, this is where you go. In the student tab, because mine says faculty, I assume it says student, I don't know. There it is right there, academic calendar, right here. Let me blow it up a little bit. Oh, and if you can't see, you need to move where you can see, because I don't blow it up very often, because it messes up my drawing. So I have to go back and do that. And anyway, where is it? There it is right there. Now you can also go in the message center, right here. If you have a message center, I don't know if you do or not. And it's right there. So academic calendar, you need to get used to using that because the worst person to ask if you're coming to school or not is me because I usually depend on y'all to tell me that. I don't keep up with it. Um, click on academic calendar, spring 2016. classes today and have had a problem come to this classroom and it blows up. There. Okay. Go down. I don't use that front page. I use this page right here. So I would highly suggest that you print this page out and put it in your notebook. And then you can put it in your calendar on your phone to copy the days that are reported to you. Your session A. 14 weeks. First thing I want to talk about is this day right here, so you need to write it down. <clears throat> I'll take my handy dandy highlighter and I'll highlight it. There it is, right there. February 22nd. I'm sorry. It's supposed to be right here. This February 22nd. It's still the same day. Right here. What is this called? We call it free advising. Advisors call it free advising. What do, you, what do you think this is? Meet with your advisor so you can do what? Sign up for fall classes. Isn't that nice? Y'all take advantage of it. Hell no. You know what y'all do? Y'all wait till the last minute and then you call up here on a break. Like between fall and summer. Between. And guess where all the teachers are? On break. And then you get mad because there's no teachers up here and you say, I just can't get in touch with my advisor. <laughs> and we all know that's a bunch of bull crap. All right, now, do advisors suck? Yes, there are some advisors that don't want to advise. Yes, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. But when you have a month's time to get in touch with your advisor and you don't do it, then whose fault is it? Yours. You have one month after four weeks, one month that you have to pre advise as a current student. Basically, you go by, the first, first thing you do is you go to your handy dandy Tri County page. Hold on, I have to switch to three different things here. And you go to Get Connected and you click on the Starfish. So make a note of that. Starfish automatically ties you in with your advisor. Your advisor, on the 22nd, I'm supposed to go through, and all of your advisors are supposed to go through, and put their office hours in to Starfish for that month. And then you go in Starfish, and you hit, I don't know, I think it's appointments, or advisee appointment, and you click on 15-minute increments. I do 15-minute increments. If you take up an hour and a half of my time, if you want to got a lot of questions, do that. I'll sit there and answer every one of them. You may not like the answer, but I will answer. All right? But you have a whole month to go in, get unlocked, so you can register on whatever day. I'll show you that in a minute. Get unlocked to see how many classes you need and to ask questions about what classes you should take. A whole month. Go back to where I was. I'm sorry, what? Yes, and I send out an email to all my advisees through Starfish. So, 
uh, one of the, one of my students, one of my calculus students, came up, of course, during the break, during the Christmas break, and I was not here. And the only reason one of the teachers was here is she was here getting something out of her office. And he was mad because he could not get in touch with me. And that teacher told him, well, I know Hubert, and I know the way he does things because I've been beside him in the classroom, and I've heard every one of his presentations, and I know he goes through and tells you that you have a month to come by. So don't give me that you did not hear it because Hubert tells his students that whole week, the whole week of February 22nd, I'm going to tell you two days. I'm going to tell y'all Monday and Wednesday and every day I'm going to I'm going to say, make sure you go by and see your advisor. Go by and get a, you know, go by a little starfish. If you don't get it, you're going to have a whole month. Get a whole month and I'll tell you the dates and all that. I do that two days. Monday and Wednesday of that week, I'm going to tell you that. So you won't have the excuse. And it's also on video, and she said that too. She said, and I'm sure you can go on the video, and you can go back to whatever day it was, and you can hear Hubert say, you need to go by and see your advisor. So if anybody should be mad at anybody, you should be mad at yourself because you didn't go by the month after Hubert told you to. And I said, thank you. I appreciate that. Because that student would go downstairs and tell the, the being in the mad, saying that he couldn't get in touch with me when he's trying to get in touch with me during the what? Break. Getting in touch with a teacher during the break is like getting water out of a hole that doesn't have any water in it. You're not going to get it. Don't wait until the break to call your advisor because you're not going to get that person. Duh. But anyway, that's that. Now let's look at some other important dates. And that's the test question. The test question will say, I, I had to, I'm going to make it a test question. It's going to say, when is pre-advising and how long does it last? Quack, water, duck, and February 22nd, one month. Some of y'all are here right. Not y'all are here, but some of y'all are here. But they're not here today and they don't listen. And they don't use the video. Okay. I'm trying to see what the name is. I want to give them something wrong. Look here. Last day of class. April 22nd. Write that down. Say again. Can't see it. Can't see it. Can't see it. There it is. Last day of class for session A, April 20 what? Now you need to be getting out your phones too, and you need to be putting these dates in there. April 26th. Did I say 22nd? April 26th. And look at there. What's right after the last day of class? And that is a test question. There's three test questions we've covered today. April 27th through May the 3rd. This question will say, when is the last day of class? Judgment Day. What, is that the one that's got September 11th, 2001 on it? Or, or December 7th, 1941? Or April 26th? Hope you all get that right. Make sure you have those three dates down. Now there's other dates on here. I don't. Grades due. When are grades due? May the 5th. That's not a test question, but the reason I say when are grades due is look at the last day of finals. The last day of that finals is when? Tuesday, which is third, the Tuesday. And we turn in grades on Thursday. So what do you think I'm going to be working on that Wednesday? Great. Is that the time to call me and ask me for an extension on the test? No. Will I answer my phone? No. Will I answer any of my emails? No. Because I sit at my house and I do my grades and I don't come to the office because of people that want me to extend their test and all this stuff. I, I, that, nothing registers that day. All I do is turn in my grades. What you have on your grade book on Wednesday the 4th, that's what you're going to get. 
care of because I'm done. Okay? Because they're going to ask, and that's my bosses, they're going to ask for me to turn in grades by midnight on May 4th. So they don't want to have to do, do this because of bad teachers, just like bad students. 10% of any population is going to ruin it for 90%. Do you all agree with that? Go back to your elementary days of school. Why don't you chew gum in school? Because some dumb butt took their gum and stuck it up under the desk. One person changed that whole rule. Same thing with grades. The reason a lot of your teachers won't do an extra day is because of the procrastinators that wait till the last minute or call and ask about the grade on the day of grade turning. So naturally, the teacher's bosses don't want to have to deal with the bad teachers that wait till the last minute, so they ask for a day in advance to have the grades turned in. And you think all this stopped in the school. No. Keeps on going. All right, so any questions on this? This page is probably the third if not the first, most important paper that you need to print out. Okay? And don't ask me, because if you ask me, I ain't going to know. Now, I know those dates now because I've got to put them on the test, but right now, I don't know of any other dates. So don't ask me, do we come to school on this day? I don't know. Okay. You all good? All right. Some of y'all might have got an email from me yesterday. Let's look and see. If you don't check your email every other month, then keep it up. You'll miss a bonus if you keep that up with me. Because you need to get with the program. It's 2017. 16. It's 16. All right. Like I said before, the days of, I don't ever check my email, that's over. That's in the 90s. Okay, it's over with. If you don't check your email every day, then don't whine when you miss something. I guarantee you if it was something to do with Clemson football or if it was something to do with something that's important to you, you would have it fixed to come to your phone. All right? So you need to fix your email to come to your phone. All you got to do is call 1779 and they'll walk you through it. It's real easy. You just got to fill out three little things and it'll come to your phone. Because I'm not going to listen to you. And you can check your email every day. All right, I want to go to sent. <clears throat> These people don't check their email every day. I'm sorry. I went to see 13 Hours the other day, and it's a great movie, but it pissed me off. So, and you just have to watch the movie to understand why it pissed me off. But unnecessary death pisses me off. Anyway, I went to see it, and I just want to make sure that everybody got a chance to vote. So... Today is the last day that you can register if you're going to vote in the Republican primary. Okay? I'm not asking you if you're Republican or Democrat. I'm just saying if you're going to vote in the Republican primary, which is <coughs> June or July, I think. I can't remember. But somewhere in there. Huh? Okay. Okay. Then she's our guru because she's been working with this this morning. She's been in the for Um you can register. Uh, what can she? What can they get? I know you all are doing this from 11 to 1, but uh, what can they get them if they need some today? Can you get some? Can you run down there right now? Let's see. Get about 10 or 12 for me, just in case. Um, if you are 17 and you will be 18 before the general election, then you need to fill this out. Okay. Um, and get registered. Ten points on the next test, on the first test. I'm also going to give you ten points, if not before the first test, after the first test, if you go see the movie 13 hours. I think it's important for everybody to say 13 hours. Some of y'all have no idea what it's about. And that's sad. It really is. Um, don't raise your hand and say, I don't know what it is, because I don't know who knows and who doesn't. All right? But if you don't know what 13 hours is about or the word Benghazi, that's sad. But you can tell when the Clemson football player went to the bathroom last. So, oh, yeah. I guarantee you there's some people that can tell you when the 
football player, quarterback, went went and got on a bus, and they can tell you what he's listening to on his Walkman, but they can't tell you who's vice president of the United States. That's sad. That's real sad. But anyway, I'm sure I'm going to shut up like that. I will give an alternative. Let's say that <coughs> Miss Smith, I don't know who Miss Smith is, um, you know, text on his own, but Miss Smith is... 17 years old, and she can And her birthday is in December, which is after the election. All right, so she can't register. She can register, but she's got to wait a while. Um, then I will give uh, after I've taken up all the bonuses for the uh, registration. Then you need to show me your ID because I'm not going to give you points for another one when you could have registered. Because it's, to me, it's important that every one of my students registers. But I don't give a rat's rear end. If you call my department head or dean and say, that ain't got nothing to do with math, I don't care. I think it's important for all my students to register. But I do this with a lot of my students, no matter if it's election or not. And just as well as I think it's important for a lot of students to vote. I don't care who you vote for. But make sure you vote for somebody. Don't vote for somebody. I don't want you to vote if you vote for somebody because my brother or cousin's uncle told me to vote for them. You vote. I think we found out what that will get us. All right? Vote for who you believe in. And you believe in somebody by what you know about them. And you don't know about them unless you read about them, unless you follow them, unless you, you know, do some research. But please do that, and I'll shut up about that. But I'm going to give you all some upcoming points, up to about 20 points, 20, on the first or the first and the second test, 10 on the first and each. Maybe. Probably going to work out to be 10 on each. But if you get a chance to go to the movies this weekend, go see 13 Hours, keep the ticket stuff, take a picture of it so you'll have it on your phone, and we'll get to that. Now, what about voter registration? If you have a voter registration card, or if you just fill out one of those forms and you get it in the next few days, that's good. This is going to go on until the first unit test. So we've got two or three weeks. So starting next week, and just just put those up here if anybody wants to get them. Uh, starting next week. Yeah, give them to her if you want to fill one out. Boy, you get one now. Uh, starting next week, I will make a... On the grade book, I'll make a thing that says bonus points, okay? And what I'll probably do is I'll probably give you enough bonus points to equal like 100, or I'll add it to your first unit test after you take your first unit test. But I'll keep up with it on the grade book. You understand? I'll put bonus, and I'll put uh, REGVOT, registered vote, and then I'll put 10 points, 10 points, 10 points. And then when you take your test, I'll transfer those 10 points over to your test grade. So you'll have 110 or 90, and you have a 10 point of 100. It'll increase. Everybody got that? So that's the way I'll keep up with it. I keep up with it on here. I don't keep up with it on this paper. All right, so, so starting next week, when you either find your registration card or you get your registration card, bring it to me, and let me see it, and I'll put it in here as 10 points. Okay? Um, if you don't, if you know that, and, and those of you that will be 18 before November, so that's the general election, you still can register to vote. If you are 18 before November, you can vote. Huh? Okay. So that means a few weeks. Mm -hmm. So it's no big deal. You don't have to go hammy on me, okay? Don't go home and turn your house upside down to try to get me a card Monday morning. That you got two weeks, two three weeks, okay? Ten points for this, okay? And the alternative if you're too young, okay? But ten points is for this one. Another ten points I'm going to give you for going to see the movie Thirteen Hours, okay? Now thirteen points for the thirteen hours. 13. The 10 point for the 13 hours are probably going to unit 2. All right? So we feel good about that? Giving y'all all points for tests, making y'all feel good? Okay. Well, we wouldn't let me 
good she was easy. Y'all gonna complain no matter what, so. What? Yeah. Yeah, it is, it is. All right. So, now let's get to work. Let me get some handy dandy. Uh, there, I think that's Now remember, on MyLabsPlus.com, if you go to MyLabsPlus and you type in your username and password and it goes funky and you're an Internet Explorer, switch over to Chrome or switch over to Firefox. And if it does fun something funky in that, switch over to the other ones that you're not using. Don't ask me why. It just works. Okay? I'm sorry. Let's go ahead and make fun of people who haven't done it yet. I think I got like 15 in here. Oh, we still got, no, I think there's like 12. We still got four people that are losers. Okay, they live in a ditch in a cardboard box, and they got 12 dead grandmothers. So we've got eight out of four, eight out of 12, so there's still four of y'all. So I'm sorry, they haven't got uh, registered yet. So we'll keep making fun of y'all until y'all get, get on there. I think we start with chapter 5, and I think we start with 5.1, and I think 5.1 is basically prime factorization. Now, now remember, I'm here to teach the students that have no clue. I'm not here to teach the people that invented mathematics. So if I cover something, it's probably because people usually have trouble with it. If I go through something and say, oh, y'all know how to do this, then that means that y'all probably know how to do this. The biggest thing about <coughs> prime factorization is these, is these two numbers right here. Prime and composite numbers. <coughs> you don't have to write it down because I'm going to write it down in front of you. I just got to get back to the thing. Let's see. Where is my... There we go. There we go. And I'm going to hit this button. i got to get this configured. And I'm going to go to the whiteboard here. I have to do this because this, these programs are running kind of funky with each other. So I just have to bear with me a minute. And in order to record, I have to go through all of this. So. And for those one or two people that actually watch the videos, it kind of helps. All right. So... Divisible. Um, 36 is a composite number. 36 is a composite number because it is divisible by 6, it's divisible by 12, it's divisible by 2, it's divisible by a lot of numbers. It's divisible by 4, it's divisible by 9, it's divisible by a lot of numbers. So composite numbers are pretty numbers. The numbers that are divisible by other numbers. with the prime numbers. Prime factorization works with the prime numbers. Now the opposite of the numbers that are easy to work with are numbers that are not easy to work with. Prime numbers. The prime numbers are the numbers that are divisible by themselves And what? One. Now, let me go ahead and tell you something on this first couple of sections. 
the first couple of sections, I think, I think it's 5.1 and 5.3, I, I can't remember. But when you look in your book, it's the fraction section. They go together. And I'm going to teach you how to do prime factorization, and I'm going to teach you how to do lowest common multiple and greatest common divisor. I'm going to teach you how to do it in probably a way that you've never seen before, some of you have. Now, there's going to be two people in here. One's going to go, I don't want to do it that way. I want to do it the way I want to do it. Okay? And then the other one's going to go, okay, I've never seen it like this, but I'm going to do it this way. If you do it the way I show you, through the two to three sections that I'm going to show you, then when we get to the, the section about adding and subtracting fractions that everybody wants, it will be so easy to you. You'll be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe this is, this is that easy. Why didn't they teach me this in high school or junior high or whatever? I'm going to show you a different way. Just bear with me. Have an open mind and say, okay, he said it's going to help me with fractions, so I'm going to keep doing it. If you follow that attitude, then you'll be okay. If you try to change horses in midstream and you be stubborn and say, well, I did it my way, this is the way I'm going to do it, well, then you're on your own. Okay, you're on your own, and when you can't do the things that we do in the second and third section, don't whine. Okay? And that's all I'm going to say about that. Now, when I ask you to factor something, a lot of you say, well, I don't know what factoring means. Now, factoring is a 25-cent word for breaking the bank. A lot of people, a lot of people are related to division. So let me give you a prime example of something that y'all all do, the factoring that you all do. If I ask you to break up 54, 90% nine, nine of you will say it's kind of nice. You just factor it. Tell you to break up x. Factor x. You'll say x times what? I'm sorry. X times x. You just factor. That's clear. Factoring is nothing but taking one single thing and breaking it up to the part. Technically, I can tell you to factor your break in the car. Okay? If you've got an older car, 380, you can have to run brakes. Take the tire off. Then you take the tire off, then you take the drum off. The drum is a big piece of metal, looks like a drum. Pull it off, and then all your brake parts are in there, inside the brake chute. And you got to take it out bit by bit, bit by bit. And there's about 15 different parts working in their brakes. And you've taken it apart and broken it up, broken your one wheel up into all these little pieces of brake parts. You factor, you broke up taking apart your brakes. That's what you're doing. You're taking a big hole and you're breaking up into parts. What about x plus 2 quantity squared? Same thing. I can take x plus 2 quantity squared and I can't draw with a mouse. I just want to sit down for a second. And I can break it up into x plus 2 quantity squared is x plus 2 times what? Times x plus 2. I broke this up into its parts. And as long as you understand what factor means, then when I tell you to factor something into its prime numbers, then all you have to know is your prime numbers. So that's easy. 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, I might have skipped one in there, I think. 19, 23, 20, no, 25, 5 times 5, uh, 27, no, not 27, 29, you get it, 31, ugly numbers, 
oops, I'm sorry, I offended somebody. The ugly numbers, the numbers that are not very easy to work with. 39, I mean not 39, 39 is composite. What did I say? 31. 31 is an ugly number. Nobody wants to mess with it. Why? Because you can't. You can't do anything with it. The only thing you can do with 31 is break it up into 1 times 31. That's it. Now, what's the problem with breaking up in prime factorization? Well, y'all just throw prime numbers out the window when I say factor in prime numbers. Not y'all in here, but students. I'll say, break up 54 into prime numbers, and you'll say 6 times 9. That's what some students will do. They just throw the definition of prime numbers out the window. you got to break up 6 times 9 into prime numbers, because 6 is composite and 9 is composite. Now, how do you do that? Well, I put it in a little chart. And this is where it goes a little bit against what some people are used to. Bear with me. It'll work. You'll see it and you'll go, oh my God. So let's take 54. And I'm going to break it into the next time back. I'm going to go a little red like that. And then I put the first five prime numbers. There's going to be people in here that says, well, I do it that way, but I just don't do it in a box. I don't do it in a, well, then when we get to 5.3 or 5.2, whatever it is, and we're doing fractions, and you can't figure out the fractions, then you figure it out your own way. So you're choosing to go that route. And I'm telling you that if you go this route, when we get there, you'll be, you'll be in high cotton. You'll be doing the problems, and you'll be feeling good about it. Let's do an error. I'm going to let you do this. If you can't do it, just write yourself up there as well. I failed you. Okay? And after you can't do two or three, then you're considered a loser and living in the ditch.
I was using both programs and I was writing and everything was showing up just like it is right now. But when I did the video, I was talking and the pen was moving, but nothing was showing up on the board. So I don't know. I don't know what I did yesterday. I missed all missed the whole video up. I just wrote it down and I should have put it. That's what I should have done. Alright, so two. We'll go into 144 how many times? Seven what? And now you can say, oh, well, that's six times nine or nine times eight. Or you're missing it. Missing the whole frame. So it ends in two. Well, how do you know what goes into whatever? Well, I'll show you. Let's take a hiatus right here. And let's go to our handy dandy textbook, and I'll show you a trick of learning the war. You'll see a page. Oh my gosh, look. Look at that. That's prime number. Look at that. That's very important for some of y'all. If the number is even, then it's divisible by what? Two. And all of us know that from our years in K through six. Two, four, six, eight. 9, 10, or 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 5, 10, 15, 20. If it's got a 5 in it, or if it ends in 5, it's divisible by what? 5 or 0. Or, I'm sorry. 0 or 5 is divisible by 5. So, if you've forgotten these, don't feel pregnant, because a lot of people do. That's all I'm saying. Don't feel pregnant. Now just forget it. I offended somebody, probably. But anyway, if you have forgotten it, then there you go. All right? What was the what? Hold on. I'm getting there. Let me go back. Gosh, you're rushing now. All right? So here we go. And so I'm going to do two again. Two will go in there 36 times. And now you're down to a manageable number. Two will go in there 18 times. Nope. Two will go in there nine times. Three. Three times. And three. One time. And we feel good about ourselves. Two to the fourth times three to the second. Miss Martin, I'm glad you asked that because I'm going to get on my soap. I go on vacation down in Panama City and uh, when I go to a restaurant or go somewhere, usually when I go somewhere where nobody knows me, I'll go down there and I'll go to the cash register and I'll, it'll ring it up. $52.77. I'll give them $60 and then I'll give them the $0.07 after they ring it up. Watch your head explode. You ever done that? Oh, it's so much fun. Yes, it is. Do you know what it says? It says this person that runs this cash register doesn't have sense God gives to make change. That's what it says. Okay? No, it doesn't mess up your register. It doesn't mess up your register. It messes up what? Your brain. Because you don't know how to add. Okay? And if I offend you, I'm sorry. It's true. It's very true. And if you ever... I'm not going to be in retail because I can't handle the public. Okay? I can handle y'all because y'all have to do what I tell you in here. No, I'm just kidding. But in, in retail, the customer is always what? The customer is always right. And... <clears throat> I'm sorry, but if I am running a store and you can't add and subtract, there is no way in hell I will put you on my cash register. Because what are you going to do? You're going to make errors. All right? It's very important for you to be confident in math. You cannot be not confident in math. If you're not confident, you're going to suck at pretty much everything. Now, this is where it starts, right here. This is where it starts. When you do this right here, this little 
this little thing right here, when you're doing this, you are basically going to the gym with your brain. And you're starting with something as simple as a five pound weight. And you're going to work yourself up. By the time you get to 5.3, you're going to be at about 50 pound weight. All right? With your brain. Because you're going to be using the stuff that you have not used in how many years? 15, 20 years? Because you've been told to use what? A calculator. All right? I promise you, by the time you get through with doing 30 of these problems, your brain is going to be firing just like it was back in the 6th grade, back in the 5th grade, when you're supposed to learn this stuff. I promise you. And then when we get fractions, you're going to say to yourself, I cannot believe that I cannot do fractions, and now I can. It's so simple. It is, because this is what you're doing. This is the first stage of finding a common denominator. Okay? And there's your answer. What's your answer, right? We do stuff where we have to reduce fractions a lot. I always start with dividing by two. Why? Because pretty much a lot of your numbers are divisible by two. And two is the very easiest number to start with. You can divide two into 100, 50. You can divide two into 10, 5. You can divide two into 70, 35. And if a lot of you would think of money when you're thinking of numbers, you will do a whole lot better. What do you mean, Hubert? Well, you'd be surprised how many times I asked you what 6 times 25 is, and y'all reach for a calculator. I asked you what 6 quarters is, and tell me it's not 25. Why do you reach for a calculator? You know what 6 quarters is. 6 quarters is all 25. But you reach for a calculator when I ask you six, what 6 times 25 is, you reach for a calculator. Because money is important to you, and you can do money in your head a whole lot quicker than you can do times 25. Not 50, whatever. I meant 5. 5 times 25. Thank you. See? It proves my point. You didn't use a calculator, did you? So, the first number I'm going to use is what? Two we're going to 242. <coughs> Oh my gosh, 121. Wow. I remember 121 in my multiplication table. What is it? 11, yeah, times, whoever said that. So 11 will go into 121 how many times? 11 will go into 11. Multiplication tables up to 15. Because multiplication and additive tables, if you can't do multiplication and additive tables, then you can't do subtractive tables and division tables. Division tables, we'll say it. 6 divided by 2 is 3, 6 divided by 3 is 2. You know, the backwards undoing it. And if you can't, I mean, it's just like a gym. Your brain is a muscle. You don't walk into a gym and put 215 pounds on the bench and get on the bench and start doing 215 pounds the first time you go into the gym. And why do y'all think y'all can do calculus? Not y'all, but students. They can do calculus just out of the blue. You can't. You have to train your brain. You have to get it to where. And if you can't lift five pounds in the gym, then you just quit, right? No. You work up until you get to five pounds. Or you work up and get to 15 pounds. Or you work up and get to 50 pounds. You don't quit. 
Oh, let me use my calculator to do this rep for me. I just, calculators have their place. Adding 2 plus 11 or taking 2 and 242 is not the place for calculator. Let's go with let's go with something simple. Not with too many zeros. Now, should you think of that as a thousand or should you think of it as ten dollars? Ten dollars. I guarantee you didn't do it that way. You still got the same man. All right, let's do a hair. We're going to do these until you're sick of them. Because basically with some people I'm having to rebuild. I'm not going to take my first time to do this.
see, it's not that difficult. You can divide 2 into 1024 and not have to go around the world to do it. You should be able to say 2 will go into 10 five times, 2 will go into 2 one time, 2 will go into 4 two times. You should be able to do that in your head. Alright? Is it even? Yes or no? So I'm going to divide by 2 again. 1, two reasons. 1, I like to divide by 2. And 2, <coughs> it's even, so you divide by 2. The way I do it is I usually divide by 2 in any number. And if it comes out with a decimal, then I know I've got to divide by something else. So I just usually divide by 2 all the time. And then if it's not visible, then I move on to 3 or 5. So 2 will go into 5. How many times? 2 times. Mentally, what's in your head? There's 1 left over up here, right? So leave that 1. That'll be 11. 2 will go into 11. How many times? There's 1 left over. Keep that 1 in your head. 12. 2 will go into 12. That's the way you need to be thinking. When you're doing these problems, that's the way you need to be thinking. If your brain's not trained to do that, then you need to start training. When you go to the gym and you start with a curl and you start curling or you start bench pressing, you know how to curl and bench press the first time you do it? Yes or no? No, you don't. You ever seen somebody get on a bench press and do bench press? When they don't know what they're doing, they bring the weight down, bang, and bring it on their chest and bounce it off their chest. You ever seen somebody do that? <coughs> they don't know what they're doing. Same thing with, okay, I'm going to be a little bit sexist here, but, you know, women work on their butt a lot, right? You ever seen that thing where you do your legs out, back back towards the little mule kicks? You ever seen a woman do that that, ain't, that don't know what they're doing? They're just swinging it around and... They look like they're not, they're not, they don't know what they're doing. Same thing here, all right? When you get a technique, you run with it, you run with it, you run with it. Same thing here. Two, I'm going to do two again. Two, we're going to two one time. There's nothing left over, so you remember zero, so that means five. Five, how many times will two go into five? Two times, there's one left over. One left over, that'd be 16. Two will go into 16. Eight times. Two. Now I'll do this one for you. 64. You should be able to do that. Two again. 32. Two again. Two again. Now since I'm running out of room, I'm going to put 2 to the third power here. 2 to the third is what? 8. So, I've got 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, 2 to the 10th power is equal to 2 to the 10th power. Now, when is anybody going to walk up to you and ask you for the time factorization of 10.4 or not. And why are we doing this? Because this is the first part of finding a common denominator. The second part we get to in just a minute. Okay? Let's do another. Let's do one that will discourage you. Let's do 35, 40. What? <coughs> I want you discouraged. I want to kick you while you're down. When you get down and you say, I can't do this, I'm going to say, quit. Because my job is not to encourage you. My job is to make you Two, three, five, seven, eleven, and sometimes thirteen. They didn't tell you that on the uh, RedmondProfessor.com. They didn't? Dang, I need to. Change my ways, you know. Well, then there's zero, so it looks like two or five. I would use five on this one. Why? Because it'll knock it down to a smaller number. You 
Dang old five will go into 35 and five will go into 40. You should be able to do that. And if you're not, if, if, if you're a little bit apprehensive, that's okay. It happens. By the time I get through with you, you'll be a whole lot better off if you're a little bit apprehensive. Okay. Five will go into 35 seven times. Five will not go into four, so what? And then five will go into 40. Look at that. It's a year. tell you a whole lot. So two. Two will go into seven. What's in your head? A one. That one goes with that what? Zero, that's ten. So two will go into ten how many times? Five. Anything left over? No. Two will go into eight? It takes some practice. If you've never done it before, Take some practice. And just keep with it. Two. You go into three. Okay, what's left over in your head? One. That makes 15. Two will go into 15. What's in your head? One. One and four is 14. Two will go into 14. Seven. I don't know if 177 is divisible by anybody. Right? Up oh, three. That's three to one. Oh, three times three times nine is twenty seven, so it's not going to be able to get to nine three. Let's try three. Three is going to seventeen. What's left over? Two. Come up twenty seven. All you got to do is make up a number. So we're going to make up a number. Now you don't have to be, you don't have to pull out a number. You might give me a number, but it has to be a big one. Make up any number. Two digits. Let's start with two digits. Take up a two digit number. I'm up for what? 27. 
can't do this one, then consider yourself a loser. Sometimes class over. Okay. All right, y'all ready to quit? Yes, ma'am. Uh, there's three. There's three options. One is you can buy the book and the code in the bookstore. Just package together, or you can just buy the code in the bookstore, or you can just buy the code online. Either way. Yeah, there's a link. Yes, we did that right before class started. Um, click on uh, go to Blackboard, and on the left hand side, or after you click on Math 165, on the left hand side there's a Link to what's it called? Link to My Lab Plus, the bridge to My Lab Plus. Click on that. There's going to be a big icon come up or a big window just outside of it after it comes up, and then it'll say, Do you accept? Hit accept, and then it'll ask for an access code, and that's if you have your access code. Buy online, it'll say buy now, and you go and buy online. Or click on the last one, it says pay later. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, homework is starting today. Yes. And it'll be whatever section it is. What section is it? 5-1. So you, you're responsible for 5-1. But we're not going to finish 5-1 today. So you can wait till pretty much Monday before you start on it. Now you can start on it for practice today. Which will be the first, probably first 5 or 10. And then wait until, if you start seeing two numbers, I'm going to try to get two numbers here in just a minute. All right? Okay, so, I'm going to use three. Why am I going to use three? Because two is going to be three. Sure. So three, going in nine times. Three, going in three times. Three, one. So the time factorization is three to what? So it's five. Give me one more number. I'm sorry, what? Ninety-nine. Now this one's real easy. Why? There's only one number up here that will go into 99. And which one's that? 11. Because any number that doubles, like um, two numbers that are the same, like 65, 99, is divisible by 11. If you have something like this, they're asking you for something else. They're asking you for the least common multiple. If they give you two numbers, they're asking you for the least common multiple and the common divisor. Or it might be 
I get them all of them and stuff. I'm not worried about the heat and this one and that. I'm just worried about the two more. Okay? Uh, two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen. Now this is part two of five point one. Why does it stop? Because there is no number that would go into three and the left. So you're done with so the least times multiple is nine. Three times three, which is nine. Now what is the least times multiple? That is the biggest number that would go into four seven and ninety nine. the biggest number that we're going to do when we touch 99. And that number is what? 9. That's the most common multiple. The least common multiple. I don't really care about that number, but they'll ask for it. The one I care about is the next one. And that is the greatest common divider. The greatest common divider. You keep going until you get one. kind of a tricky math, or a magic math. All right? If it doesn't divide, you can find it So, what number, I want ones on the bottom. Let me put, let me put a green one here and a one here. That's what we want. We want the ones on the bottom. If somebody tell me what we can divide by to get a one. Can we get a one? Say again. Okay, divide by three. I'm going to do this in green. That's why you'll notice. <laughs> Magic math. Is what I okay, a three there. Does three go into three? Yes or no? Yeah. Hey, there's one. Well, three will go into 11. So we do what? Bring it down. number that nine or 
27 and what? 99 will go into. This number is very important because this number is 297. And the next section will be your common number. Okay? Let me give you an example. Uh, 5 over 27 plus 7 over 99. Now I found the common denominator. The common denominator is what? 297. And you find it every single time. Now, I don't expect you to know this. I'm going to give you one more. Okay? I'm just showing you what we're going to do. Let me do another one. You don't have to write this down. Let me show you one more. I know we're working on this one, I'm going to take it Let's go with a, let's go with 25. I'm going to do something simple. 25 and 250. <coughs> that takes time. I'm going to freeze that. Take the roll. Mm -hmm. yeah, four minutes. And all the way out. Okay, Miss Brown is here, Miss Burkhardt is here, Miss Burton, Byers, yeah. Dawson, yeah. Eastridge, yeah. Lowey, yeah. Miss Martin is here, Shoemaker, yeah. Story, yeah. and Miss Kelsey. Everybody's here. Yes, ma'am. Did I say Dawson? Yes. Okay, everybody's here. Let's count. One, two, three, four. Yeah. what? Okay, well, I've only got kosher. What's your first name? Yeah, you need to check the student records. I don't have you on my list. Unless your last name is different. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eleven. Nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yep, you don't exist. Sorry. Now, check the student records and find out. Um, I don't know why you're not on my list. Have you ever been on the list? Let me look. Yeah, because I don't have you, I don't have you on my roll for Wednesday on any of my class days. So just check with them. I mean, tell them, have you attended every time? Have you attended every every day? This is your first day. Okay, check with student records. Can you get a chance? Because I have a feeling something ain't, something ain't right. Okay. I mean, I don't mind, but you got to get on the roll in order for me to take roll. You know, I can't add it. They have to keep it. Okay, let me do this problem, and then y'all can feel good about yourself. Right? Huh? No, it's not. You're getting more confident. Y'all need to be. Y'all need to be more confident.
And I'm going to stop because you don't have anything I'm going to want to see. So, 25 is the biggest number that will what? Go into this. That's your least common multiple like that. Alright? Greatest common divisor. 2, 1, greatest common multiple. 5. The biggest number, or the smallest number that these two numbers go into is 2 times 125, which is what? So that's going to be the common denominator when you get to that point. Well, you wouldn't write that as you write 2 times 5 to the first time. That's the answer, but that's the way to get to All right? Yeah, what? That's fine. Two times five to the third power, that's fine. You need to have this, which is five to the second power. You need that and this right here. We'll do the other later. All right, so what y'all need to do tonight for homework or tomorrow for homework, whenever you do it. I don't care when you do it. You need to do probably the problem all of 5.2. Oh, I'm sorry, 5.1. Okay? And send me questions. If you have questions, send them and we'll go over them in class. The more you send, the better off the class will be. Okay? Glad y'all got to see me. Okay.